afternoon. I'm Tarsila. I am currently doing my PhD research at the University of Groningen in the Netherlands with a scholarship provided by the Ministry of Education of Brazil. Uh, I present you today uh, two first studies that we are doing. We are planning a randomized <coughs> clinical trial with severely depressed patients. And we have already done two studies, one literature review and, uh, which has been accepted and is about to be published in the British Journal of Psychiatry. And we are finalizing another article uh, done with a qualitative approach about the discourses of blue light, one of the biggest international message boards currently available on the internet. So is ketamine a pill for all pains? With, currently, with current treatments, around, oh, more than 30% of patients do not respond to the antidepressant treatment prescribed. Of, this, of these patients, around 20%, even with all the, the treatment steps, including electroconvulsive therapy, they do not achieve remission, and they have treatment-resistant depression. Besides that, the medication, the antidepressant medication available, they require months, weeks to months, to produce a therapeutic effect. Well, ketamine, the quick antidepressant effect of ketamine is, is linked to its action in the glutamatur glutamatergic NMDA receptor and it, uh, ketamine is an antagonist of these receptors. Ketamine is a chiral compound, which means that ketamine molecules exist in two different conformations, but with identical composition. The best analogy are, is human hands. They are mirror images of each other, but they are not superposable. Two mirror images, two molecules, are, they are called enantiomers, and they have the letter S or R in the front of it. So we have R-ketamine and S-ketamine. The, the most uh, pharmaceutical preparations, they use a racemic mixture of ketamine, which means 50% of R-ketamine and 50% of S-ketamine. S-ketamine is uh, believed to, have, to be more active than R-ketamine, and when compared to our ketamine, as ketamine is believed to have fewer psychotic side effects. But the majority of pharmaceutical preparations use the racemic mixture. Both open label studies and randomized control trials are, have already shown that ketamine has a large effect in treating depression with a single intravenous application. This supports the idea that besides the monoaminergic systems, the monoaminergic systems are the, the target for the current antidepressants available, but ketamine acts in the glutamatergic system. So it calls the attention to uh, this system to be a target on the treatment of major depressive disorder. The glutamatergic system is also linked to neuroplasticity, which is linked to mood disorders. The rapid antidepressant effect of a single subanesthetic intravenous dose of ketamine is one of the most significant breakthroughs in the pharmacological treatment of depression. This is our review. We have done some searches in PubMed with the terms ketamine, depression, neuropathic pain, and chronic pain. It yielded 88 articles. We scanned all these articles for dosage, amount of patients that use ketamine, number of ketamine days, results, and side effects. Ketamine is a well-known as an anesthetic drug. As an analgesic, it's known to have good effects for a long time. In the morning today, uh, I, I, I was in a lecture about uh, John Lilly, one of the one scientists that studied a lot ketamine, and he, uh, the lecturer said that he started John Lilly started to use ketamine 
to treat his migraines. He had terrible migraines. So the use of ketamine as an analgesic is known for a long time, but it's not approved as an analgesic, only as an anesthetic. In the field of pain management, uh, there is ample evidence that oral ketamine and intravenous ketamine, they have good results, and ketamine is being used an off-label use of ketamine, a non-official use of ketamine, is being already used for treat phantom limb pain, cancer pain, neuropathic pain of various origins also. It, as in depression, it is believed that the therapeutic, the, the mechanism of action to treat pain is the same as the mechanism of action to treat depression, which is antagonism of NMDA receptors. This is a graph that we retrieved from the pain studies. Uh, the majority of pain studies used uh, the intravenous application of ketamine, which is represented by the blue bubbles. The diameter of the bubble uh, represents the sample size, how many patients had ketamine. So the small bubbles, less patients, and the bigger one, the bigger bubbles, more patients included in the sample. Uh, the doses used in the pain studies varied from 0.1 to 62 milligrams per kilogram per day. It is not possible to establish a dose response association, but the pain studies, the majority of them had good results even with low doses of oral ketamine. Oral ketamine is the, 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 the route of demonstration that has the lowest bioavailability. So is, even with low doses, orally, uh, ketamine had good results to treat pain. I would like to remark this study, number, this green bubble, number 53. In this study, oral ketamine was administered for 660 days daily in one patient with a, a, with a severe case of pain, of, of chronic pain. And this patient had a significant improvement with no severe side effects. This is the graph that we retrieved from the depression studies. Also, in the depression studies, the majority of them used the intravenous, uh, the intravenous route of administration. And the most common uh, dose was 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per day and other small doses for a short period of time. That's why there, there is this huge overlap in this part of the graph. Short durations and low doses of ketamine. The highest dose used was 36 milligrams per kilogram per day, is number 38, bubble 38. And those patients using at the, of a point 38, they have a significant improvement with non-severe side effects, just a mild headiness was described. So when we compare the pain studies with the depression studies, we can conclude that the doses used in the depression studies are in the lower range when, compar when compared to the pain studies. Also, we can conclude that ketamine for depression was administered for shorter durations than the pain studies. We found no evidence for neurotoxicity caused by ketamine at therapeut therapeutic doses. We know that prolonged ketamine use can cause some damage, mainly uh, in, in cognition. It can cause cognitive impairment, reduced well-being, as well as memory changes. Also, inflammation and damage of the ureters and bladder are reported, are well documented in heavy users. Heavy users use around 80 milligrams per kilogram per day, which is two times higher than the highest dose used for in a study that used ketamine for treating depression. Side effects commonly mentioned were hallucinations, dizziness, drowsiness, uh, headache, somnolence, anxiety. And all these events, they did not persist after ketamine discontinuation. And an interesting point here is that those side effects were not a problem to keep the treatment. 
So from our review, we can conclude that there is enough scientific ground for future trials to incorporate longer treatment durations for depression based on the experience with pain trials. So this is, was our idea, to retrieve some pain studies because the analgesic use of ketamine is used for a long time. So we can base our RCT, our upcoming RCT, with ketamine for depression. So it's a, a, good, it's a good base for us to show the safety of ketamine. And depression is, always, uh, is usually linked to pain also. Now I will talk about our qualitative study. Uh, we, made some, um, we made some searches in blue light with the terms ketamine and depression. We found some threads. There are a lot of threads in blue light that talk about scientific articles. We were looking for personal reports of use of ketamine for treating depression. So people that get ketamine, sometimes in the, in the black market, the majority in the black market, and then they self-administer ketamine to treat his or her own depression. And Blue Light is one of the main websites with user-generated user, user content about drugs and drug use. That's why we, we chose Blue Light. Drug-related forums on the internet, they are increasingly innovative in providing information for users regarding safety, harm reduction, and general knowledge about drugs. Also, the internet is the most popular source of information about illicit drugs and their use. And an obtrusive approach was taken. The threads that Blue Light were viewed only, we did not contribute, we did not comment anything, we just viewed the threads and made content analysis of them. Living with uh, treatment, sorry, living with treatment resistant depression was reported with great sorrow, and I quote, I have literally never taken an illicit, illegal or recreational drug in my life. There are various, various reasons, but the biggest was that they would almost all interfere with my prescribed medication for, wait for it, depression. I've been on various antidepressants since age 19. I'm now in my 40s. I don't even remember what it's like to have a normal sex drive, orgasm, ability, saliva in my mouth, not to be dizzy. So ketamine appears as an alternative, sorry, not only for SSRIs, select, serotonin selective reuptake inhibitors, but also for electroconvulsive therapy. And I quote, with the specter of ICT looming on the horizon, I'm looking into ketamine for treatment-resistant depression. Also, some members describe that ketamine is really useful for suicidal emergency cases because ketamine provides immediate relief. And I quote, without it, I am fucked. I honestly think I wasn't able to do it at all. I just continue with my plans of suicide that I had for many years and long before I ever used ketamine. So given how uh, bad the suffering can be, it's legitimate <coughs> that these users look for solutions, for options by themselves. And they report the existence of some ketamine clinics where ketamine is administered uh, at a huge cost for patients and no insurance accepted naturally, says one of the members. Health insurances are not accepted in the ketamine clinics because, as I said, the antidepressant use of ketamine is not officially approved yet. Um, these clinics are reported as a money racket and the prices charged are, are seen as outrageous. The ketamine clinics work with the intravenous application of ketamine and the prices vary from $300 to $1,000 per infusion. Yeah. Uh, some Blue Light members, they reported uh, uh, having noticed the antidepressant effect of a ketamine after a recreational use. They call it a beautiful afterglow after using ketamine. This mood enhancement is one of the, of the depression relieving effects. Other depression relieving effects mentioned were pleasure, relaxation, self-knowledge, improved cognition, motivation, mind is moving. And one, one member 
out of a total of 124 members studied, reported having no antidepressant effect after using ketamine. Only one in 124. Well, according to the analyzed reports, intravenous ketamine is more accepted in a medical setting. And I, and I quote, IV is out of question and I can only call it abuse. So ketamine, uh, some members, uh, the members that uh, reported having used ketamine intravenously, they did it in, in a, a clinical trial or in a ketamine clinic with medical assistance. The intramuscular route of administration is a good alternative to IV, but it perceived risks make it unpopular. Oral ketamine is seen as a waste to treat depression because of its low bioavailability. The bioavailability of oral ketamine is around 20, and when it's compared to the other routes of administration, it's kind of low. And the intranasal route of administration was the most mentioned one. Either the ketamine was obtained legal or illegally. Legal, legal intranasal ketamine is being prescribed as a na nasal spray. About the dosages, some, there are two points of view about the optimal dosage of ketamine to treat depression. In, in one hand, some users, they defend the use of uh, uh, several times per day, low doses of ketamine. And in the other hand, the, some members, they defend the use of a big amount of ketamine once in a while, like once in a month, for example. One of the most popular threads, it's a really big one, this thread uh, about uh, low doses of ketamine, sub-psychedelic doses of ketamine to treat depression, it starts with the following disc disclaimer. Ketamine's euphoric and transcendent properties make it a substance easily abused. Even in a low dose regimen, the temptation to do just a little more this dose can be ever present. Each brief period of euphoria makes you feel as though you are close to a supreme truth. If only you could do just a little more to figure it out. Do not chase this feeling. It's a transient false lure. In the other hand, some uh, defend the use of enough ketamine to reach the K-hole, and I quote, do enough ketamine to K-hole or whatever amount you prefer, but no more than 250 milligrams intranasally. Take an evening to enjoy it. Get the full experience. This results in much less consumed ketamine. It also avoids trying to pussyfoot around proper doses, which almost nobody can resist the temptation to take when they are dosing themselves with ketamine. You will spend most of your time as a sober human being. Ketamine's antidepressant properties are known to last for easily two weeks and often longer. There is no need to do it multiple times daily as an antidepressant unless you are just trying to prove you can walk a very, very dangerous line that few can tread successfully. <coughs> About the side effects, just as we found in our review, the blue light members also mentioned uh, the urinary bladder and the kidneys as the most affected organs. Other side effects mentioned were anxiety, insomnia, and paranoia. And just like we found in our review, those side effects were not reported as a burden. A burden. So having depression for several years, and some people, they, have the, they live with treatment-resistant depression for 40 years, some, some people describe it, they cannot listen to music and after having ketamine, dealing with the side effects is like a walk in the park. I can listen to music again. So dealing with the side effects of ketamine is not a big burden, but living with uh, treatment resistant depression, it is much worse. We are now planning, as I said, we are, we are now planning a randomized control trial in the Netherlands. We already got uh, the approval, the financial support of Zomeve, a Dutch sponsor. We are going to administer as ketamine, the enantiomer with more activity, as an add-on treatment to severely depressed treatment the patients. So they are going to, the, the patients will keep their conventional antidepressant treatment and they will have a plus of as ketamine or placebo during weight weeks. 
Our sample size is 122 patients, so 61 will receive as ketamine and 61 will receive placebo. Our, the primary uh, outcome is differences in the scores as measured by the Hamilton depression rating scale. We are also going to assess the side effects and those are our two goals with our trial to assess safety and effic efficacy of as ketamine, oral as ketamine to treat depression. But we are also doing two fMRI sessions one before treatment and one during treatment at week seven. Uh, we think, we want to check uh, whether ketamine increases brain activity in the prefrontal cortex and uh, we think, we believe that ketamine will reduce the activation in the insulin, in the limbic structures and in the, the four mode network in responders. We are going to collect blood to measure brain-derived neurotrophic factor, which is connected to neuroplasticity. And also we are going to collect urine to measure norketamine, which is an active metabolite of ketamine. Thanks for your attention. Thank you.